Julie Syracuse from Threefold Paranormal. I just wanted to do a short interview about our experiences down while investigating this case. I met Holly Ann Hughes when I was about five or six years old. And I just remember her being this sweet, innocent little girl, but sad little girl at the same time. I had gifts that I really didn't understand. I, I could pick up the energies off of her. And I was sad for her. And But I, I remember us always being together, playing in the playground and doing school plays. And, you know, and one day she was gone. And I couldn't understand it. I didn't understand it. The, you know, our parents didn't really explain it to us that well other we other than we knew that she was gone we went down there in july the first place we went was ps20 where i met her and going down there with different eyes like more open and more aware of your surroundings was so different it was so different being an adult and going down there and Feeling the feelings that you felt as a kid after being bogged for so long was just overwhelming. We found out a lot of things that don't make sense. It's very confusing. And I really was really confused. I mean, you have to understand, I'm a girl who's friends with Holly Ann Hughes who went down there to try to find answers about what happened but it happened to her I, I had no experience I knew I needed help I knew there was only one person that I wanted to help me with this case Vanessa Hogel and then I met Rachel Wagner and these two girls have become my friends and they're amazing at what they do and together as a team all we want is to find answers and to find People to believe us. We know what happened. We need you guys to believe us. And hopefully this documentary is going to open your eyes and make you think, you know, could this have happened? Is this true? Could the wrong person that's in jail right now be the person that actually killed her? We need you guys to really open your eyes. So please, watch this documentary with open eyes and understand, try to understand where we were coming from and our hearts are in the right place. And Holly Ann and I will always have a connection and I will never give up. I'll never give up. Neither will Vanessa or Rachel. We'll never give up on finding answers and getting people to believe the things that we've experienced there. So thank you so much for watching this documentary. And just all I can say is watch it with a different outlook on things. We know someone's in jail for her murder. We, we get that. We know that. We understand that. He's a terrible man. And this is not about him. This is about the truth. And what we believe that really happened to her. And, and all the other little, little children that went missing. So I thank you for watching this documentary. And I think my girls and also Gwen Clapper for everything that she has done. She's amazing. And if it wasn't for her, Vanessa Hogel, we would have never had this documentary. So thank you so much, Rachel Wagner. I love you so much. And thank you. And that's, I just hope that you guys could really understand what we have went through and what we've experienced down there. Thank you. I love you guys.
Um, first off, Vanessa, can you let me know, just tell us how you got involved with this case with Threefold and what's what's the general backstory of this case of Holly Ann Hughes? How I got involved was I was kind of loosely connected with Julia Suakusa and her husband, Phil, based on the home that they own that's known as the Horsefly Chronicles House. And um, based on the work that I did for them on remote viewing and investigating their location, Julia felt that I would be a really good fit in looking into the disappearance of her childhood friend, Holly Ann Hughes. I told her I would be more than happy to do it. I was pleased and honored to be asked, but it was going to take time because time's not something I've got a lot of. <laughs> and um, so it was actually a year in the making before I even got to where I was at a point where I could go. And when that came, when that you know came to be, it ended up being, I believe it was the 35th anniversary of the disappearance of Holly Ann Hughes, um, which was the time frame that I was able to be there. So it, it kind of worked out perfectly. Um, Julia knows my remote viewing skills. She knows that I'm a channeler, so to speak. She knows that I have a, a particular skill set that might have come in handy when you're talking about a case that's so old. Um, she knows I've done this type of work before on a much smaller scale, much less known scale. When I've, when I've worked on other cases, they're not things that I can talk about publicly. Right. So um, it, it just ended up being a really good fit, really good fit. Okay. What um, the, the interesting thing about the uh, disappearance of Holly Ann Hughes is that it's not the, the documentary itself is surrounding her disappearance, being that Julia was a personal friend of Holly, correct? I mean, she, she knew Holly. Yes, um, she did. She, she did. remembers when, when Holly went missing. Yes, um, so this, this is a, a more personal level. It's more of, a, of an investigation of who, what, when, where, why, more so than a paranormal investigation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you bring up a good point because are we paranormal investigators? Yes. Are most of us psychics? Yes. Do we have a particular skill set? Yes. That having been said, when we went there, those became tools. And the investigation became, first and foremost, not to prove that anybody was deceased, but to try to find out how they got that way. What happened? What led up to it? Now, we do all know that there is somebody that is in prison for two of the missing children cases. Two, Jennifer Schweigert and Holly Ann Hughes. And that particular person is Andre Rand. He is the face you can put to the name of the legend of Cropsy. Uh, there are many, many other children, young adults and adults who have went missing over the decades in Staten Island. And a lot has been loosely, speculatively tied to Andre Rand. Um, but none, to my knowledge to my knowledge, have any specific, direct, and infallible evidence connecting him to them, including the two that he was prosecuted and convicted for. Young Jennifer went missing at the age of 12. Her remains were found a little over a month later in a shallow grave located on Willowbrook State School just a few yards away from where Andre Rand had a campsite. Holly Ann Hughes went missing in 1981. Her body has never been found. Andre Rand is currently serving a sentence after being convicted of abduction of both girls. He was also an employee for Willowbrook State School in 1966. Please understand, as I know you do, Gwen, and anyone who's watching this, our intent going into this documentary was not to clear Andre Rand. It wasn't in the beginning. It wasn't in the middle. It isn't now. It won't ever be. Our whole purpose of going into this was to try to get as many answers as we could, find out as much information as we could, and try to bring closure to not only my dear friend Julia and yours, but to anybody who's involved in the case. Because there should never 
be a case when somebody just disappears. Why did you become a part of Threefold Paranormal? I became a part of Threefold Paranormal because I felt an instant connection to Julia. Uh, she was the first person that I met in regards to this, this case and this team. And I, we just really like hit it off. It was it was like we've known each other for years and I really appreciated the way that she was so into getting answers in regards to Holly Ann and the sincerity of, of wanting to get to the bottom of this case and I just I really appreciated that about her and um, also because I grew up in Staten Island at the same time that kind of like all this stuff was happening and I had my own experience when I was about eight years old. Um, I was walking home one evening like it had just started to get dark and the street lights had just came on and um, in the 80s, like, you know, it was totally on Staten Island. It was, you know, be home before the street lights come on. And, you know, you always heard, I always heard from my mom or my grandma, you know, you need to be in before it gets dark. There's bad people out. You always heard of, like, the whole urban legend type deal thing. And um, on my way home, I was literally right next to my house. And there was a gentleman walking towards me and as we went to pass each other he opened up his coat and tried to grab me and I ducked under and I ran around the fence and I was able to to get away from him but I was almost abducted that night and um, that also made me want to be a part of this team it was also part of the connection when you first got up there, I think it was when you first got to Staten Island and you had messaged me on WhatsApp and you were very concerned because here it was middle of summer, but there was no children to be seen anywhere. None. None. You know. The only place we ended up seeing any children was when we finally made it to the pool that supposedly Holly Ann had been at that day. Right now we're in PS20 where I met Holly Ann Hughes, where I went to until the fifth grade. <sighs> I, the energy here is just really bad. I actually feel like I'm going to throw up. I'm walking around the school to the front of the school. And apparently there's a park right behind us, and all the children are being targeted in this park, in, in, the, in the school's play area. There's a park over there, and they used to sit there and just watch the children, which I always felt and knew that we were all being targeted right over Very here. Very much so. Very much being watched, definitely watched. That's my Vanessa, I remember reading and it being a part of the the Cropsey thing mm -hmm. that about the cults mm -hmm. that he was that he was maybe part of he that. Would, he would have given them up. No, okay. He would have given them up.
There it is, Park. Okay, there's Park Avenue. Cool. Okay, now we're on Park Avenue. So this is where they saw his vehicle. Everton? If you that go this way. way. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. This car was seen over here. Hold on, Vanessa. This car was seen over here. It was probably a week, maybe a little bit longer, before um, I was due to fly out to Jersey um, for Phil to pick me up. <clears throat> I was woken in my room by this incredible sound. And if I had to describe it, and it makes no sense, but if I had to describe it, imagine a milk jug, an empty milk jug, a gallon, filled three quarters of the way with pennies. Okay. And it's it was being picked up and slammed down so that you would hear that clanking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of the pennies. It woke me up. It would go on for hours or minutes, just depending on which. It just wouldn't stop. And, I mean, I could hear it in any room I went into in my apartment. And um, it happened about 3, maybe 4 o'clock in the morning when it would start. I didn't think anything of it at the time, except for, I, you know, I knew that it was a message, but I didn't know what. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can know what that sound is. Right. Well, we figured it out. And it's the sound of the backs of the, um, the trash trucks oh. coming up. And, and the trash and slamming down. It was the closest I could come. There's nothing else that would mimic that sound. Are you talking about the pennies? Very much like that noise, only it was more rhythmic. Oh yeah. Is anybody else getting a headache? Uh -huh. I'm just full of, like, I'm shaking. Everything's just shaking. The headache's probably going to come next. I really want to get like if I get the headache. Do y'all mind if I go and talk to that woman? Talk to who? Um, I, I don't want to, want to take to any cameras woman? in there. I just want to go ask her a private question. Okay. okay. I won't be filming it or nothing. Okay. But I asked her. I said, do you believe that the person responsible for this is in prison? And she, again, bless her, told me, no, ma'am. And the fact that when hard questions are asked, nobody wants to answer them. And that leads us back to previous documentaries that were done. And I, this won't be a direct quote because I'm not listening to it as I speak, but there was a particular... Um, from what I understand now, a retired officer who was interviewed for another documentary mm -hmm. um, in regards to this subject. And he was asked, just like you're talking to me, you know, if um, he knew of any type of what people would consider satanic worshiping, because that's been one of the many facets of this mm -hmm. is the occult. Okay. He was asked if he knew of any, satanic worshipings happening on the grounds of Willowbrook, which has a direct tie to Andre Rand. And he said, I'm sure there have been. And he was asked, do you believe that any sacrifices or along those terms were done on those grounds? And he goes, I'm sure they have been. And then he asked, he was asked, 
do you believe any children were involved in actions like that? And he refused to answer the question. Oh. If somebody can explain that to me, I would love to hear it. Because at the time of this previous documentary, Andre Rand was in prison. He was in prison. So, yeah. And this particular officer was retired. Why can you not answer directly a question in regards to whether or not children could have been sacrificed at Willowbrook? Doing mm -hmm. any type of occult activity. I would love to know the answer to that. Can you describe how you felt when you first stepped onto the grounds of Willow Road? Wow. Um, when we, when I first stepped on to Willow Brook, it was a very overwhelming feeling. Um, very sad feeling sadness despair um, it was really it was really rough um, it was really hard it was sad um, and I remember feeling like there was a gentleman in one of the windows of the first building that we came up to and it, it was very overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. Okay guys, this is the view. Here we go. Are you ready? Sorry that uh, video is going to be a little bit weird, but I'm actually climbing up a hill right now. And look what we got. Mother. Man. God, I wish y'all, I wish you were here. I wish you could feel this. This is unbelievable. Okay, let me show you my girls. Come on, girls. <coughs> oh, my God. Oh my God, there is so much, it's everywhere, oh God, this is what we got going on people, this is why we came here, this is what's been a year and a half in the making, is getting to this place where the legend of Cropsey was given some weight. Is getting to this place where the legend of Cropsey was given some weight. Mm. 
And that's what we're trying to figure out. This is why we're here, is to find out if the people who resided here, anybody who resided here, had anything to do with the kidnapping, possible murders of all these children, the definite murder of Jennifer, the possible kidnapping and murder of Holly Ann Hughes. This feels like the forgotten, completely forgotten. I don't know if you guys can tell from where we are, but this was the grounds of the Willowbrook Hospital, which has now been turned into a school. The majority of the grounds have been turned into a school. Why they would do that is beyond me. I have no idea, considering some of the atrocities that happened here. Oh my God. Unbelievable. You can't walk these grounds and not feel the energy of the people who were here. You can't walk these grounds and not know how they were mistreated, how they were made to feel inferior, how they were sexually abused, how they were physically abused. You just can't do it. And I can only feel the pain and the anguish of those who resided here. Underneath these grounds are supposed to be tunnels connecting different areas. People have lived in these tunnels. This was their home. This horrible, horrible place is where people have lived even after it was closed. I mean, can you understand that? I want you to think about that for just a minute. Just a minute, actually. Put yourself in the position of these people. Those who were tossed out like yesterday's trash after this place closed down. And I say closed down, I use that loosely, after this place was shut down because of what happened in it of the absolute horrific, horrific nature of what went on here. <sighs> oh my God. It's indescribable. It's indescribable. Yes. We found it. Yes. Well, um, certain things happen in certain buildings, but we're not able to see the building numbers. Oh my God. Oh 
my god. Be very careful of loose flooring and What did you up there? I don't know. I'm up here. I'm up here. Watch the flooring, please. Oh my god. I'm up here. You okay? Yeah. It's just so much. Oh my god. Oh god. Julia. Yeah. Come here. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can do this. Oh, God. Get my hand. Yes, you can. I don't have one. Okay, come here. Come here. You're fine. You're fine, honey. Come here. You're fine. Only the dead ones, honey. You're fine. Come on. I'm not afraid of the dead. The dead's fine. Come on. You're okay. Is she in here? Holly's not in here. Wow. Thank you so much. Yes. It was out in Alice. What the fuck? No, 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 no. What the fuck? Okay, someone's got to go before I want to What's the matter? What's the matter? Come on. What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> If you notice towards the end of the hallway, there is a light anomaly that shows up in the darkened room and then disappears just as quickly as it appeared. Now some people may argue this was the work of the beam from Rachel's flashlight. However, Rachel's flashlight doesn't appear until after the beam was shown, thus debunking the idea that it's possibly a reflection from her flashlight. As the light goes down, it doesn't reflect. When there's no flashlight, it pops up again. Vanessa then pans off to the right. As she pans off back towards the left, before that door in the darkened room goes out of camera range, you will notice that the light anomaly shows again. You guys, I just want to say, oh my gosh. You guys, look. Look, look, go to the right. There's a face or something painted on the wall or something. Hold it. Hold it. Everybody be quiet. Everybody be quiet. <laughs> okay, we got to go. We got to go. Be careful. Just go slow. Oh, my God. Fuck. Okay, guys. I can't even begin to explain the energy in here. I really can't. I don't even think that I've ever dealt with anything like what I feel in here. There is so much anger. There's so much anger. Oh, my God. Am I almost... Okay, I'm almost out. Although the use of pendulums can be controversial... Vanessa has used them in the past with great success. It is a skill set that she has used on several other investigations. So it was decided to try one here at Willowbrook.
Can you tell me if when Jennifer was found on this property, was she being reburied? Was she brought here from somewhere else? Clockwise for yes, counterclockwise for no. That's clockwise. Uh, stop the pendulum, please. Okay, I know you still want to say yes. Please stop now. Did Andre Rand kill two nurses? at Willowbrook Hospital. Clockwise for yes, counterclockwise for no. That is a no. That is a definite no. Wow. Okay, I thank you for your time. I'm closing this session. I appreciate you talking to us and giving us your answers as best you could. Uh, there's no need for, a few, for further communication attached to this pendulum with you right now, okay? So we're going to go ahead and close this up. Thank you. We were all standing, discussing, and we were standing right next to this, um, doing a video. That is... This and then where, this is where you and I were fucking standing. Right. The two witches. Right. And neither one of us knew, noticed it we until I picked my bag up. That, that I think that's I think that's a definite good sign. And none of us noticed it until we went until I went to walk away. I, I didn't notice. We walked straight over where it said fuck Cropsy. Right. Yeah. Does that help? Yes. Yes. Oh. Hey. Hey. Can you tell us your name? Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, Joseph you're Joseph? here with us? That was me. He said me. Joseph, can you tell us? You should I ask about Jennifer or no? Any, uh -huh. any of the disciplines. Do you know about any of the goods that were taken from the proxy case? Yep. yep. Can you tell us? Oh my god. Do you, which one of the do you know about Holly? <gasps> he said yes. Yes. Okay. Do you know what happened to Holly? Yep. 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 Do you know where Holly is now? We need to go to the across from the mall mm -hmm. instead of Jersey. Mm -hmm. What do you say? He just said something. Yeah. Sorry. Joseph, do you know where Holly's body is now? Yep. Mountain. Let's go. We have to go. Mountain. Mm-hmm. Not a soul would speak to us on camera. Not a soul. Matter of fact, I believe we were at the hotel for three nights, if memory serves. And I would go out in the morning, um, outside down to this little sitting area. And I got to talking with a fellow that was there while, I, you know, we were out there smoking in the morning. And I told him what we were doing. 
and talked in great detail about it, about what our purpose was. This started on the first morning. He was all for it. He thought it was the best thing since sliced bread, that it was wonderful that, that we were there with this purpose. Mm -hmm. Third morning, third morning, okay, third morning, back out there, and he has somebody else with him, a companion. And he and I and she now are talking about this. She seems on board. And this is pretty early, 7, 8 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. They both agreed to be interviewed because she had grown up there. He hadn't, but he had heard things. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to give you a call by 11 o'clock. He gave me his phone number. Um, 11 o'clock comes, I call. No answer. 11.10, no answer. 11.15, no answer. I walk down the hallway, go knock on the door. I can hear them. They're supposed to be there a whole other day. No answer. I go back to my room. I'm like, all right. I know. I get it. I'm not pushing it. I'm not going to be that girl. Okay. Right. We're leaving a little later to go downstairs to go and look at different locations. We have other, we have a schedule we've got to follow. And lo and behold, they're both of them are appearing to check out a day early and walking past me like this. They won't even make eye contact. Wow. Won't even make eye contact with me. After great discussion with Vanessa about this clip, she assured me that nobody had been smoking, so any type of cigarette smoke has been debunked. But if you look at it closely, it does look like something is coming down, touching the ground, forming into some type of a shape, and then running off. What was it like during the interview at South Beach? Wow. Um, the South Beach interview. Uh, I feel like that interview was pretty much set up because the person that we were interviewing wanted to know what we knew. I think that he was just trying to figure out, like I said, how much we knew. And to kind of like boast and brag um, about their experience um, with this case and um, the person was just completely full of crap <laughs> he was uh, they were just they were full of shit and wanting to know what we knew and also trying to direct us in a way that was completely opposite of everything. Like he was just full of shit and uh, he, like I said, he just wanted to know what we knew and direct us in the wrong way. And I almost kind of feel that he did that because there was some maybe bad intentions for us, knowing that there was women only working on this case and uh, thinking that maybe we were easily man manipulated and uh, not gonna happen. We knew, we knew from the jump, as soon as we saw him, what he was all about. And uh, we fed into his ego for some of it, and then um, Vanessa and I had to walk away because this shit was just getting too deep. We 
we yes. did get we did get one fairly significant interview and I want people to keep in mind this person sought us out in our build up to mm-hmm. go in there because it was months long you know we had a good two or three months of social media build up before we even got there this was the strangest interview I've ever done in my life strangest um he wanted so desperately to impress us with his follies as a youth his what I would only construe as illegal activities as a young adult and an adult um with how he could put fear into people based on the things he told us that it made me wonder why he was even there. Um, he was very closely connected to the case, okay. to the prosecution of Holly Ann Hughes. Very closely connected. And again, like I said, he sought us out. And when I started talking to him, not having really told him about anything about myself and what I do, or Julia or Rachel, um, he he made the he made the what I consider an unmistakable blunder of saying, well, you know, if you were to go to this particular location, and he was talking about a water tower, like fairly significantly far away. If you were to go there, I could guarantee you, you'd find the bodies. A couple of minutes later, I asked him again. I said, so you're telling me if I went out there today, right now, I would find these bodies. And he said, I can guarantee it. I said, so you're telling me 35 years after the fact of Holly Ann Hughes disappearing, that if I went to a water tower today, I would find her body that supposedly had already been searched by the police decades ago. Is that what you're telling me? (laughs) And he just looked at me and I said, yeah, I don't think so. I said, we have a very a very good idea as to where Holly Ann is based on experiences that I had before I even came to Staten Island. What did it feel like being at Fresh Kills? Um, Fresh Kills? Well, it was kind of like a mix of a couple different emotions. Sad because we we knew what had happened. Um, we also were happy because we got a lot of answers. And a lot of verification as to what had happened. So sadness, happiness, and uh, I guess some accomplishment. I mean, it felt good, but it was also really sad. What are the goals you wish to accomplish for the Legend of Cropsy case? Um, our goals, we want people to open their eyes to see what really happened. We want people to know the truth. We want it, we want everyone to know. We want people to realize what really happened. Um, we want people to, to know everything, every last detail. We want to break this down for everybody. And we also want some closure. We want closure for these children. We want closure for everybody. 
that way, you know, the families have the closure and these kids can actually rest in peace. We also want these kids to be remembered. We just don't, we don't want them just to be forgotten. And there's nothing on Staten Island to remember any of them. And we want to take this documentary and we would like to sell it to everyone to so that they know what happened and also all of the money, all of the proceeds that we get from this documentary. We want to take that and we want to build a memorial for these children. They deserve that. They deserve they deserve the recognition. The families deserve the closure. And that's what that's what our goals are. We want these these kids to not be forgotten. And not just these kids, but any kids that have been missing are still missing and just forgotten. Uh, this is where Holly Ann led us to, right here, and you will see, I'm hoping, the lights light up as she shows us that this is where she is. Can you see that? God, I hope you can see that. Holly? Holly, honey, can you talk to us? Holly, make those lights light up again, okay? This is being filmed with a regular camera, not a cell phone. We have tried to use it. There we go, Holly. Good girl. Come on now. Try to make it go up to an orange or a red, okay? Try to make it go up to an orange or a red. Can you light it up so people know where you are? Holly. Come on, babe. Light it up for me, honey. We're going to walk around a little bit. Not surprised that since we got here, after stating to one particular person that we believed this was the area where her body was, that every single thing you could think of that could stop us from filming this has happened. Every single thing from lawn mowing men to leaf blowers to people interfering with how we're filming, everything. You can hear that in the background, I'm sure. Holly, they're walking away, sweetheart. Can you show everybody that you're here? Come on, baby. Give me an orange or a red, please. An orange or a red, honey. Come on, there you go, sweetheart. Can you give me an orange or a red? Come on now. Holly, show everybody where you are. There we go, sweetheart, thank you. I apologize, everybody, it's very hard for you to see this because it is daylight, but this particular area, we can't get into at night, so. And here comes the lawnmower again. Julia, Vanessa, and Rachel all set out with one goal in mind, to try to find answers. Unfortunately, it seems that they ended leaving with more questions than answers. But that's not going to stop them, as they're still searching for the truth. It's also disturbing how people were scared to talk, would say, yeah, we'll talk to you, only to try to sneak out of the hotel unnoticed, or when the ladies would go in and try to ask for directions. Even then, people were very timid about telling them anything. Why? If the man that did this is in prison, what are they afraid of? In either case, the ladies are going to pursue and try to find more answers. 
After all, Holly Ann deserves it. They're hoping to have more and better footage for the follow-up documentary, unknown date and release time, but it will happen. In the meantime, this is for the remembrance of Holly Ann Hughes. Hello, my name is Gwen Clapper and I am the producer and editor of this documentary. Um, first, I would like to say that I am very appreciative to the ladies of Threefold Paranormal Investigations, Julia Saracusa, um, Vanessa Hobel, and Rachel Rodbell. I've, I've known Vanessa for a while and I met Julia through Vanessa and then ended up meeting um, Rachel along the way. When this was all first brought to my attention, I'll be the first to admit I never heard of Legend of Cropsy. I had no idea who Andre Rand was, no clue as to these children or the circumstances around their disappearance um, involved. And I was kind of upset by that because of the nature of everything and everything surrounding the circumstances of their disappearance and the circumstantial evidence, basically, which is what convicted Rand on uh, Jennifer and Holly's disappearance. Um, to my knowledge, nobody's been charged with their actual murder. And there was also other people, other children and young adults that turned up missing during the time period. But to my knowledge, those were the only two that they've actually linked them to by circumstantial evidence. I found this fascinating, but disturbing. I'm not taking up for Rand. It's obvious he's a very disturbed individual on whatever level it may be. But I do appreciate the truth. And I do appreciate the correct people being held accountable. I did some of my own research while working on this documentary and I came across some information that was very concerning, but I'm going to look into it more because that's just the way I do. <laughs> um, it seems to be more of a, a personal connection through Julia. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because Julia, you know, personally knowing Holly Ann. And I can't imagine what the family or friends have, have gone through all these years. I, I really can't. And again, this whole idea of this documentary was not to free Rand. That's that's not it, but to question how somebody can be found guilty on abduction of two children when you have the body of one, you don't have the body of the other, and the only thing really connecting him to it is eyewitness accounts, which I'm not a big fan of eyewitness accounts, and I can say that because I was a police officer for a while. And eyewitness accounts are a very sketchy thing to work with. You and I could be in a bank and somebody comes in and robs the bank and your account of the robber and my account of the robber could be two completely different accounts. But we were standing in the same building when it happened. It's been proven. So as far as Jennifer's disappearance and then her being found in a shallow grave, there was no, to my knowledge, no DNA, no forensic evidence connecting him to her murder. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Um, and it's based on eyewitness accounts that he was seen walking with her hand in hand the last time she was alive. As far as Holly goes, while he was serving his time for Jennifer's abduction, a witness comes forward 20-some years later and says, oh, 
I remember seeing his vehicle where she went missing. I'm going to save some other information for a follow-up documentary through my research that I've been doing. Um, the whole car theory, I'm, I'm, I'm not sold on, and I, I have my reasons. But somebody out there knows the truth. Again, Rand is not a nice person, and he's probably where he needs to be for other crimes. I'm just concerned about real justice, because we need to have the right people accountable. And if he's not accountable for it, then who was? Who is? I was actually brought along on this um, documentary. Um, right before, I think it was, Vanessa went up there to go on this um, investigation with them, I was asked if I would put the documentary together. I told them that I would. I do apologize. Uh, this is my first documentary I've ever done. I had a vision for it. I knew exactly how it needed to be laid out. Unfortunately, there were some issues beyond people's control with some of the footage. There was some decent footage, but you couldn't hear anything because of technical issues is how I'm going to put it. Um, inadequate operation of the recording equipment. Um, but it is what it is. So I worked with what they had. A lot of the footage I had to convert and reconvert and reconvert just so you could hear what was going on or just so you could see what was going on. Um, it's been a work in progress. It's not exactly where I wanted it to be, but it's a start. It's a start. Um, I know that I can say on the behalf of the girls of Threefold Paranormal that we all appreciate your love and your support, and we just ask that you look at this case with an open heart and an open mind. Ask questions. If you get an answer or somewhat of an answer, ask more questions. Ask another question on top of the question. Some people say, oh, you need to just leave this alone, let it lie. If it were my daughter, I don't think I could do that. Um, <clears throat> and another reason why this case has affected me so much is because when I was an officer, I worked a missing persons case. And I went by the evidence that was in front of us. And this was a missing adult. And I also went by my gut. And I kept saying what I was feeling and what was being shown to me. And I was being told, oh no, he just ran off. He just ran off. That wasn't the case. He was found dead a heart attack. Meanwhile, he had a very worried wife and a brand new grandchild. A grandchild that he didn't really get to spend a whole lot of time with waiting for him at home. So cases like this, granted he was found, but it's the strange and unusual circumstances, the things that don't make sense. This is why I told him I would do it. And I'm looking forward to possibly doing a follow-up documentary. And this time, yours truly will be handling the camera. <laughs> so with that, um, I say thank you very much for taking your time to watch this, to consider what you've seen, whether if you believe in the paranormal or not. Look at the facts. Look at the facts, the paranormal stuff aside. That's all we ask. Thanks again.